You nexus, huh? I design your eyes. Sure. If only you could see what I've seen with your eyes. Sure, a pair of sparkling blue eyes really packs a visual wallop. But what if we told you they were just an illusion? <laughs> What if we told you that unless you are the possessor of brown eyes yourself, you are engaging in visual trickery? And it turns out that it's not just our blue-eyed brethren that are in on the illusion either. It's green, hazel, and gray. They're all pulling one over on us. The blue eye mutation occurred some six to 10,000 years ago. Before that, all humans had brown peepers. The mutation to the OCA2 gene, which regulates the amount of pigment in the eye, meant there was now the possibility for diluted amounts of pigment in the iris. Pair that with light interacting with the absence of pigment and voila, shades of blue, green, and hazel began to crop up. But there's not a speck of actual blue or green pigment in the eye. Even if your name is Rudger Hauer, Paul Newman, Elizabeth Taylor, Gollum, or Elsa, it's still an illusion. The pigments are actually yellow or brown in color, and since the iris has three layers, a thin top and back layer, and a thick middle layer called the stroma, these pigments can be deposited in all three layers, or just one. So think of the deepest, darkest brown-eyed person you know. He or she has brown pigment in each each layer. There's no need to create an elaborate ruse of color. Blue-eyed people, on the other hand, have irises that are messing with light. In fact, it's a little like having blue skies floating around in their eyes because it's the same effect that makes us perceive a cornflower blue sky. The blue or gray eye starts with brown pigmentation on the back layer of the eye. But the stroma has a scant amount or no pigmentation at all. So when light enters the iris, most of its color components, think Roy G. Biv, are absorbed by the brown pigment at the back of the eye. That's because these colors have longer wavelengths and are more easily absorbed. But blue has a shorter wavelength, which means it scatters like mad all over those colorless cells in the stroma, just like blue scatters in the particles of the Earth's atmosphere. In the eye, this is called the Tyndall effect. As for green and hazel eyes, it's a matter of a little color mixing. Yellow pigment with the blue Tyndall effect for green, and brown and yellow pigments for hazel. So do we see the blue illusion elsewhere in nature? You betcha. One example is a sapphire-colored blue morpho butterfly. One side of it its wing is brown, which, you guessed it, absorbs the longer wavelengths of light. The other side has tiny transparent structures made out of chitin, which bounce light off of them in a way that the blue becomes the predominant color that we perceive. All of which makes you wonder what else about life is just an illusion. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out these three videos as well. And don't forget to visit us at StuffToBlowYourMind.com. Let's talk eye myths. Myth one, we see everything in our field of vision. Not so you have a blind spot, I have a blind spot, we all have a blind spot. See, our corneas are like windows that allow light to pass through to our retinas, where it's converted to electrical signals in our brains. That eerie glow is doing nothing to dispel the myth that cats are simply agents of Satan. What glow?